afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the 62nd Annual Ada Invitation on the campus of Ada High School. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Jennifer Beck and our entire WSN crew. And Jennifer, I have been coming to the Ada Invitational since 1986. I ran in this Invitational, I coached in this Invitational, I parented in this Invitational, and I'm broadcasting in this Invitational. Well, you're clearly the one to be here doing this because your experience exceeds probably just about anybody who is currently here as well. well I appreciate it. The good folks at Ada put on a fantastic show. Our first event today, Jennifer, is the girls 100 meter hurdles. Let's take a look at the field. Lane one, Carly Childs of Van Wert. Lane two, Ivy Bellerman of Arlington, Lane 3, Emily Bombauer of New Knoxville. Lane 4, Greer Blankemeyer of Cary. 5 is Mariah King of Ada. 6, Callie Cotter of Bluffton. 7, Aubrey Frankhauser of LCC. And in Lane 8, Kylie Faust of Spencerville. And a great start for our first event here at the Ada Invitational. Girls get out of the block quick, and they are racing down the Ooh. track. Just a uh, note, we do not have Aubrey Frankhauser in seven, and unfortunately in eight, Kylie Faust was down and did not get back up. She did not get back up, and it looks like, uh, I, I believe, I believe it was Mariah King from Ada I who got the win. Yeah. I think that's what we saw. So a nice start to the Ada Invitational here. Girls get out of the blocks and a couple uh, issues there. We don't have the weather today. Uh, we've got some rain. Uh, they're not calling for a lot of rain today, but it is sprinkling on and off. So it uh, could be a factor in the races. A little bit of wind as well that we yeah. have going on right now. You've uh, you've been a runner a long time, Jennifer. These aren't bad conditions to run in. This is a lot better than 87 and humid. Well, truthfully, for middle distance and long distance, the slight drizzle is a good thing for the breathing. Anybody who has breathing issues shouldn't really have a lot of problems with it right now in this type of conditions. Though, you know, the other thing we want to think about is the handoffs. Yes, that yes, You yes. do have a wet baton, which is something that our relay teams will need to be thinking about Great pretty soon. Great point, and we talk about that all the time. It's not the fastest team. It's the team that gets the baton around the fastest. So let's take another look at the next heat for the girls' 100-meter hurdles. In lane one, we have Jewel Steeman of Spencerville. Lane two, Azanet Hatter of Fostoria. Three, Maddie Krieger of Corey Rawson. Four, Ryland Jones of Allen East. We've said that name many times oh, for, yes. <laughs> for hurdles. Lane five, Aubrey Burkholder of Bluffton. Six is Kelsey Bursby of Cary. Seven is Timberly Kidwell of Fostori, and lane eight, Harper Roop of Van Wert. And Rylan Jones comes in with the best seed time at 15.8, and she is in lane four, and she gets a great start, and she is over the hurdles first in a fantastic job by Rylan Jones. Absolutely. That first hurdle, she was still close with Bluffton and Corey Rawson, but look at her <laughs> now. She is owning this race. Jennifer, that is a clinic on how to do hurdles. She three-stepped every one of those. A fantastic job by Ryland Jones. What are we surprised about? We see it in every sport with that young lady. Welcome back to War Memorial Park here for the Ada Invitational Track and Field Meet. Our title sponsor today is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style happens here. Jennifer, the boys' 100-meter hurdles. Let's take a look at this fast field. Ethan Woodruff from Allen East is in lane two. Cam Jesenowski of Kenton in three. Julian Gross of Ada in lane four. Lane five is Bryce Puckett from Cary. James Albers of New Knoxville in six. And Brendan Swackheimer of Spencerville in lane seven. Always looking for a fast start as the runners get up and out of those blocks, and we'd love to see the approach on the first hurdle. Don't see Julian Gross from Ada in lane four. It is an empty lane. You are correct. And another good start for all the athletes. Looks like that was Cam from Kenton. No, maybe not. I think that... Actually, I think they have made a change here in I, this and what we actually have now. So I think that they may have made some adjustments since we were given our um, our heat sheet. Yeah, we, I apologize, yeah. those names were probably incorrect. Well, which happens a lot in, in the bigger meets when they make some moves and if there is a few athletes that get moved in and out of different heats. My guess is that was Bryce Puckett from Cary who won correct. that. Yep. Um, we apologize to those of you. Also, any of you who are hearing me say the names and if I say them incorrectly, please send me an email at jbeck at wtlw.com. We're going to be covering track all the way to state. And, Danny, we want to get the names oh, correct. Absolutely, absolutely. And, um, 
We just don't know all of them, actually. <laughs> we, we get into some uh, big-time names, and uh, we try to, try to do the best we can. So you're absolutely right. We want to we wanna service you good folks that watch these broadcasts and uh, do the best job we can. So the next heat is up for the boys' 100 meter. And, Jennifer, I'm watching the kids uh, warm up here, and the track looks a little slick. We haven't had a lot of rain, but the humidity is really high here today. You are exactly right. And, you know, it's always interesting how the – Varying conditions can make such changes for the runners. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So let's take a look at this field for the boys' 100-meter hurdles. Fastoria's Travel Coleman is in lane one. Brody Baker of Cary in two. Carson Cruzy of Bluffton in three. Jackson Brown from Ada is in lane four. New Knoxville's Jay Schroeder is in five. Keegan Putoff of Corey Rawson in six. Trenton Heacock of Ar from Arlington in seven. And Kyle Basil of Bluffton in lane eight. Yeah, we take a look at the seed times. And the hometown Bulldog, Jackson Brown, has the best seed time coming in at 14.9. Can he hold off the field with that fantastic time this early in the season? Now, I realize that uh, in a sprint, every tenth of a second matters. But he is point six ish away from the record. Now, 0.6 is a lot, Sure, but what could happen? Let's see what happens. He's out quick. A nice job by Jackson Brown. Oh, very a smooth. Fantastic job. Oh, my goodness. Take a look at that right leg, how he just, it's like a machine right there, the way he moves that. It looks like a trip hammer. Did you see up and down, up and down? Fantastic job. And Jackson Brown thrills the home crowd as he wins the boys' 100-meter hurdles in front of the Bulldog faithful. And we're back here at the 62nd Annual Aid Invitational Track and Field event. Danny Holbrook, Jennifer Beck, our entire WSN crew on a cloudy, uh, little damp day, but we'll take it. And Jennifer, everybody knows who watches WSN track and field knows this is my wheelhouse. <laughs> the sprints, you know how much I love the sprints. I've coached them. I, I attempted to run in them, but uh, wasn't real good, but uh, love the sprints. And, and, you know, it comes down, especially in this race, the start is yes. so very yes. important. Now I'm going to read who is in these lanes before we watch that start. Lane one, Kira Ray of Kenton. Two, Jaslyn Florence of Van Wert. Three is Lexi Greer of Spencerville. Lane four, Natalia Wilson of Temple Christian. Five, Malia Payne of Faustoria. Six, Sophia Klein of Cary. Kylie Clem of Harden Northern in seven. And Lillian Brigowitz of Corey Rawson in eight. And it looks like Natalia, Natalia, excuse me, Wilson from Temple Christian is going to get the win in that heat. So That's a nice right. job by that young lady. Stretching it out. She got a great start, Jennifer, and uh, just kept it the entire. And that's the key, really, in the 100. You said it best. It's a great start, and then it's keeping that up when you get down the track. Now, on the weather-wise, how do you feel right now with it, considering you are our sprint guy? I'm the middle <laughs> distance person. I can talk about that. But, yeah. But we have a little... The wet, we have ahead of it a little bit of wind. Right now we don't have a lot. We have a little bit of drizzle. Yeah, typically sprinters like the hot. They like the 90-degree temperatures. They love the fact that they're sweating a little bit before the event starts. Let's take a look at our second heat of athletes for the girls, 100-meter dash. Lima Central Catholic's Tatum Marks is in lane one. Jordan Smith of Ada in two. Maya McDougal of Bluffton in three. Kendra Deering of Van Wert, who we've talked about at the state meet yes. many times now, is in four. Addison Wright of Fostoria in five. Audra McMichael from Spencerville in six. Aubrey Young of Allen East in seven. And Alexis Greaser of Arlington is in lane eight. Three freshmen in this heat. Yeah, this is something special here. Watch Kendra Deering from Van Wert. She loves to get out and get a lead and make people chase her. Let's see if she can do that in this event here. And a great start by all the athletes. And here comes Kendra Daring, and she is being challenged like, on the outside. That's right. That's Audra McMichael of Spencerville. And it looks like Daring takes the that win. That was a close one, but yep, I think Daring, you're right, is your champion. Welcome back to War Memorial Park here for the Ada Invitational. And just as we start the boys' 100-meter dash, the rain starts coming down, and it is really raining on us here. We'll see how that affects the race. Let's take a look at this field, Jennifer. In lane one, Kelby Blythe of Van Wert. Lane two, Alex Ariano of Lima Central Catholic. Lane three, Mason Sch Schmidt Schimpt of Mohawk. Lane four, Zach Zerby of Spencerville. Five is Kaiser Young of Bluffton. Six is Carson DeLong of Kenton. In lane seven, Boston Reynolds of Delphus Jefferson. And lane eight, John Stansberry of Mohawk. And we'll see how the young men do on coming out of the box. We saw earlier a couple guys were slipping and sliding a little bit, so the track has a little bit of slickness to it. Uh, hopefully no one goes down and we get a clean race here for the boys' 100-meter dash. 
taking a look here and it looks like in lane two, I don't see anyone there. That would be Alex Ar Ariano. I'm giving it the Spanish pronunciation, okay. but I'm not sure here. Cinco de Mayo weekend, yeah. uh, I don't see Alex there, but I do see the rest of the runners. So they are in the blocks awaiting the official to go to the set. And we are underway in the boys' 100-meter dash. So a good start for all the athletes and a great race in the middle of the track in lane three and four. It is a battle on all the outside. Oh, take a look at lane four. Seven. Oh, lane oh. seven. <laughs> You're right, Jennifer. Boston Reynolds from Delphus Jefferson made a great race out of it, and it was too close to call. Back here for the final heat of the boys' 100-meter dash from War Memorial Park. Danny Ober, Jennifer Beck, Ada Invitational. And the boys' 100-meter dash, and this is a really fast heat, Jennifer. That's right. Really, really close times. Everybody's in the 11-second range. Our fastest is lane four. Griffin Stackhouse of Bluffton has the fastest seed time with 11.10. Next to him in five, Logan Jolla for the 11.2. Here's who we have all throughout the heat. Ryan O'Neill and Faustoria in one. Braden Harrison of Faustoria in two. Jackson Brown of Ada in three. Griffin Stackhouse from Bluffton in four. Logan Jolla of Ada in five. Jackson Friesner of Allen Easton, six. Trip Phoenix of Cary in seven. And Braxton McMichael of Spencerville in eight. Watch Jackson Brown in lane three, everybody. He just won the boys 110, or 100, excuse me, 110 hurdles, excuse me. Uh, let's see how he does in the 100 meter dash. And he does get out to a great start in lane three, but it's lane four and lane five. Lane four from Bluffton. It is Griffin Stackhouse running away from the competition. Impressive. Right from the beginning, he had his head set in a specific way. So when he came out of that, just in a cone to move him up, and by the time he came up out of his position, he was already in that lane. Absolutely, Jennifer. A clinic on how to run the 100-meter dash. Back here at War Memorial Park for the 8 Invitational. It's the girls 4x200 meter relay, Jennifer. In lane 1, we have Kenton. Lane 2, Bluffton. Lane 3, Carey. Lane 4, your top seed time coming in is Van Wert. Lane 5, Spencerville. Lane 6, Faustoria. Lane 7, Allen East. And lane 8, Arlington. So much to this race besides just running around the track. It's four athletes. It's 200 meters apiece. But the handoffs, the staying in your lanes, the, the, the switch between runners, there's so much that goes into this that people don't consider that is that, you know, coaches really, really get after this race. Runners in your lanes. On your mark. We are off in the girls' 4x200 meter relay here at the Ada Invitational. Van Wert, like I said, is your top seed time coming in, is leading off with Olivia Vost, who is a junior. A lot of freshmen are leading off, however. Spencerville's Lillian Strayer is the leadoff for them, and those are two of the teams that I know are really battling it out. Spencerville knows what Van Wert can do. Yes, they face each other quite You're absolutely right, yeah. Carey is on the other side with a 153, and then Fostoria with a 152. Everybody is eyeing Van Wert. Yeah, Van Wert Cougar is a strong track and field program. We've seen their girls' program over the years and right now it looks as though if I can get a read here I believe it is Allen East in the lead right now Van Wert coming up on the outside so that's lane seven take a look at the handoffs which gives us that story we need to hear I think Van Wert I think is you are correct Van Allen Wert, East yeah. is second right now that's Evelyn Lehman who just took the baton for Van Wert and Kendra Deering is listed as the one running here. You know, Kendra could be your leadoff. Kendra could be your anchor. Sure, yeah, absolutely. But if they really did put her in third, and I'm assessing right now, you know, they, they can change. And I think that we actually now are seeing Kendra Deering 
I believe so. And a smooth handoff for the Van Wert Cougars there as they continue to lead here in the girls' 4 by 200 meter relay, followed by Allen East. And I believe Spencerville coming up in the middle of the track. It's such a hard vantage point from where we're looking at to get the read of the athletes until they come around the uh, the, the home stretch here. That's your right. Spencerville's anchor has moved them up into second place. And it looks like that is where they will finish. And we got a, a race for third place here. Bluffton on the outside in lane two. And I believe Bluffton edges Allen East for third place. So a great run for all the girls there. The Van Wert Cougars take home the girls four by 200 meter relay. War Memorial Park for the Ada Invitational Track and Field Meet. The boys' 4 by 200 meter relay up next. Our title sponsor tonight, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style happens here. So let's take a look at the field, Jennifer, for this big relay event. In lane one, we have Ada. Lane two, Mohawk. Lane three, Carey. Lane four is Bluffton. Lane five, Spencerville. Lane six, Allen East. Lane seven, Lima Central Catholic. And lane eight, Kenton. I'm looking at lane four, that team from Bluffton, Jennifer. They typically have such strong relay teams, and uh, what a nice seed time they have right now at 132. Or excuse me, 135, I believe that is. No, you're right. Yeah, 132. Yeah, 132 is right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so we'll take a look, see if the Pirates can hold off the field in the boys' 4 by 200 meter relay. Set. And they are off. Clean start by everyone, off and making their way around. Take a look, however, out there in lane six, Allen East. You're gonna talk about a fun team always to watch. Oh yes, Allen absolutely. East, man, they just, their athleticism always comes out. <laughs> Every time we mention this score, that school, we always see somebody new break away and do great. And there you saw Allen East, a really good handoff there as they are in the second position here in the boys four by two. Clary close with Bluffton. You know, Allen East and Bluffton, I think they were almost tied on that handoff. Bluffton's second runner, Hayden Durth, according to what we have. Uh, Gonna have to take a look at the stagger though because Allen is still running strong right yeah, now. Yeah, and one of the runners has dropped out with an injury and it is in lane eight, I believe. I believe that is New Knoxville, am I correct? Um, that is Kenton. Kenton, sorry about that, is Kenton. The runner went down. So a close race here, and you're right, Jennifer, it's Bluffton and Allen East, one, two, in this titanic struggle in the boys' four by 200 meter relay. So Allen East is going to anchor with Trey Hensley, state champion relay runner say. from last year. Bluffton's going to anchor with Griffin Stackhouse. Here we go, a great finish here. And look, I believe Ada is coming on the inside, trying to compete for a one or two position. It's Allen East, it's Bluffton, one, two, in the boys' four by 200 meter relay. Look at Trey Hensley in his neon shoes, the pink neon shoes, trying to catch him, but it's not to be. <laughs> Allen East, your champion. What a finish there, and I was, uh, Got to correct myself, that was Carey on the outside. And they finished third in that race. So a great run for the Allen East boys and the Bluffton boys. What a fantastic finish. Back here at War Memorial Park, the girls' 1,600 meter run. Jennifer, a big field here. Uh, had a little bit of sprinkles, but now we uh, can calm down a little bit. So let's just hope we don't get any more of the R word. Well, as we've talked previously, the distance runners actually like <laughs> right. this weather. Now they might not like there's a bit of a wind that's picked <laughs> up, but the, as otherwise, this is good for distance running. And when it comes to distance running, there are a lot of runners in this race. We've already had an entire heat of 1,600 runners, 26 total girls running in this race. And here's who we have in this heat, the fastest heat. In lane one, it's Nora Matthews of Bluffton, Emily Morrissey of Lima Central Catholic, and Marissa, Marissa Ledley of Kenton. In lane two, it's June Essinger of Bluffton. She is one to watch, I tell you. It's also Claire Johnson of Mohawk, Caitlin Braun of Spencerville, and Noelle Byram of Van Wert. And in three, Addie Manns of Kenton, another one to watch there. Chloe Etzinger of Cary, Alexis Oakley of Hardin Northern, and in four, Araya Fenning of New Knoxville, Izzy Kretz of Arlington, and Isabel Carmen of Allen East. See, you distance runners are just wired differently. You have great attitudes, and uh, sprinters, they just like to go out there and get their work done. Distance people, they like to get out there, and they just go and go and go. We are underway in the girls' 1,600-meter run. 
We're pleased to announce new pricing for the WSN streaming service. For only $8 per month, you can watch WSN from anywhere at any time. Sign up today at app.wsn.tv. Also available on Roku and Apple TV. You can watch us from anywhere in the world you want to watch us, and we appreciate your support here on WOSN. We do want to remind you that if you are trying to find us on Roku, you need to have one of the newer Roku devices. If you are still using a relatively old Roku device, maybe 10 years um, older, there is a chance that you're not going to find us on the right, Roku right. Yeah. menu. And it's not our fault. I promise you it is not our fault. Don't ask me my thoughts on Roku <laughs> updating their their services because I had to buy a new one not long ago. Welcome to the WSN Tech Hour. <laughs> <laughs> I will say this, the WSN Score app is the best thing for my phone. I check it constantly, and it is updated all the time. They do a great job with that. That's right. You can also get that on your phone. It is the new one. Yep, yep. We got a new app within the last couple of years. The old app is not going to work. All right, almost around here to the first lap, and we have in the lead, that would be, I believe, that is Spencer. I believe it is Spencerville. You are correct. Spencerville. You are correct. The ladies forgot to wear their name tags for me <laughs> right. on their foreheads, very large, so that I can read it. We are yeah. we are on top of the press box, folks. We're just that's, getting ready to go there. That's how we are viewing this awesome meet today on top of the press box. We got we have a great vantage point. It's just that when they come around the last curve, it's hard to see who they are. So we have to wait till they get closer to us because we are high above the trees here in Ada, way up in the air. But uh, I, I'm not scared. We're not we're not shaking or we're not anything like that. So. Our fastest seed times coming in, Our the top seed time is June Essinger of Bluffton with a 5.25.94. Next for that is Addie Manns of Kenton with a 5.31.33. And then we have Nora Matthews of Bluffton with a 5.32.52. Those are your top seed times. And Jennifer, you ran distance running. You were a state level competitor at your prospective high school. Did you like to get out in front? Did you like to lag behind? Mm -hmm. What was your philosophy when you ran these races? Well, um, I'm having to think about this for a little bit because I never won state, so my philosophy. But you were did, a state level but they, they, I yeah, was, yeah, yeah. I was every year, but my, obviously my philosophy didn't work <laughs> because fair enough because I didn't win. Um, but I think that in a race like this, it's so very important to run your own sure, race, sure. your own race. And and I was a middle distance runner, and so I guess I would say in the 400, I did that very thing. I never started in the blocks. I actually had a reverse split always. I always ran my second 200, or yeah, 200 faster than my first 200. And so I think that is the key, uh, is just to run your own race. And that is what I what I did. We're seeing that here as well with um, the, the, the Bluffton girl has now moved her way into second place, possibly first pretty soon, but that wasn't the case at the right, beginning. Right, and you look at all four of the lead runners here, they all look really comfortable. A lot of times we'll watch this race and we'll see maybe somebody lagging a little bit behind and you see them fading back. But right now, the top four runners are right there together. So far, a great meet here at Ada High School, the That's right. Ada Invitational. We've been talking about all the years that we have been here for this event, and a big crowd on tap today. Uh, if we can get a shot there, the, the the bleachers are pretty much full all the way on both, or excuse me, on the on the home side here, and quite a few on the visitor side. And we have a lot of people standing around the chain link fence. So a nice crowd here for the Ada Invitational. One lap to go, and Bluffton has moved strongly into the lead. Not a surprise. I mentioned from the beginning who you would want to watch, and we are watching her right now increase her lead as we make her way around. Also a pretty accomplished swimmer there, June Essinger. Just a great runner, comes from a distance running family. And take a look at her stride. Her stride has gotten bigger. She's on her last lap. She is increasing her speed, and her arms are pumping with a lot of power. Yeah, she looks incredibly strong right now as she leads the field. Looks very comfortable, and she is pulling away from the top three, or excuse me, the top four runners in this race. 
I, uh, I, I hesitate to say it, but the rain has stopped. Yes. We went from one point during the sprints when the rain was pretty much uh, coming down at a, S solid, a soaking rain. Yeah, yeah a, a soaking, soaking rain. rain. We did have a little bit of a drizzle when this started, but as uh, as Bluffton's runner makes her way here into the finish, no rain right now. No. Well, maybe a few tiny drops, but Any. making her way in with a lot of cheering. Fantastic performance by that young lady. She wins the girls' 1600 meter run. And the top three, excuse me, top two, three and four runners, and the fifth runner from Kerry coming across the line. So a solid performance by all the young ladies in the girls' mile run. Back here at the Ada Invitational track and field meet where the rain continues to come down on and off. And uh, we just came through a pretty rough shower here. So uh, as happy as we were earlier, now we're a little soggy here, Jennifer, for the boys' 1,600 meter run. Well, and Danny, I think the thing that these runners have to adjust to is the fluctuating weather. You're they right. this, these The first heat of the 1,600 started without this little downpour. <laughs> when they finished, there was the downpour, but now the rain has ended for this well it's back to just just the very light an aggravating rain i call it <laughs> <laughs> an aggravating rain and i've been talking about how the distance runners love it but i am not even <laughs> sure if they love it with the way it's going here well this is heat two of two and here's who we have as our competitors on the field in lane one andrew laudick of van wert lane also in lane one tanner braun of spencerville hunter faust of corey rosson and riley miller of Kerry. in lane two owen scott the uh, state qualifier from last year from Van Wert, Grant Welty of Corey Rawson, Phoenix Nally of Mohawk, and Calvin Durstein of Bluffton. In lane three, Braden Cleveland of Mohawk, Ethan Rawl of Kenton, Ezekiel Sensabaugh of Astoria, and Caleb Putman of New Knoxville. And in four, Cade Regal of Arlington, Ethan D'Souza of Ada, and Michael Free of Lima Central Catholic. Yeah, and Owen Scott from Van Wert comes in Jennifer, with that 429 time, which is this time of year absolutely fantastic. Let's see what he does in these conditions. Underway for the boys, 1600 meter run. Not a lot of wind today, so uh, that, that's good in one aspect, but as I said, an aggravating rain because it just is, continues to sprinkle, but it, uh, it'll get heavy at times and then it'll let up, and now we're in the midst of just a little mist right now, so. That's right, I can promise you that all of our equipment is protected from the rain, but I can also promise you the rest of us are. I was gonna say. Every I, single yeah. element of everything else in our broadcast area <laughs> is, completely is very, moist <laughs> very 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 moist I, we are part of the broadcast and we are both completely soaked right now but having the time of our life wouldn't want to be anywhere else we're that's getting right, texts from uh, other wsn folks asking if we're okay <laughs> but folks that's how it works we that's we right. the weather doesn't deter no. us from being here it's part of what we do you're out here supporting your kids we are out here supporting the absolutely. kids as well absolutely take a look at owen scott who has the lead right now he he is being challenged by, I actually didn't see who that was, yeah, was as he say, came we, around. Came around pretty quick there. But Owen Scott looks comfortable in that lead position for the Van Wert Cougars. I noticed that Owen right from the beginning, he uh, he actually shot out of his lane a little faster than everybody else. He, you know, in the 1600, you don't necessarily start with a fast start, and he had a calculated start, but he was, he was just right from the beginning. He knew what pace he wanted exactly. to run, and he, he knew how he wanted to run this yeah, race. Yeah, now we've got top two runners pulling away from everybody. You can check out our website, WSN.TV, for scores and standings for more sports and teams than anyone in the state. Check out our broadcast schedule, upcoming games, social media posts, and more at WSN.TV. There you see the WSN banner flying high on the other side of the track. We've got our banner over here so everybody recognizes us. And uh, we thank you for your support as we support your kids and your schools. I also want to remind you that a great opportunity for your business is to support one of our broadcasts. We are definitely not finished with track and field. We will be doing uh, broadcasts all the way up to the state meet, and it is an excellent opportunity for you to get your business heard. In fact, these track meets run all summer long. So you really, really get your money's worth in so many realms when you, uh, when you sponsor 
one of our broadcasts. Yes. And you're supporting local television. It's really a win-win. And they also go up on YouTube, which which I catch them on YouTube all the time. I always wait for them to come out. I critique myself, and I watch the broadcast. And uh, You critique really yourself. Are you asking others to critique yourself I, no, as I well? <laughs> <laughs> I think sometimes people get enough of Danny Holbrook. They don't want to watch it on YouTube. So. <laughs> you can turn the sound down if you really want to, folks. I mean, I wouldn't recommend it. I think Danny does an excellent job, but that is that is my oh, wow. <laughs> my biased opinion. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. I think we do a good job together. So, the boys' 1600 meter run, and we've got a couple of runners out in front. And Owen Scott from Van Wert continues to lead, doing a terrific job as he comes around on lap three. And he looks really comfortable, Jennifer. You know, and he has an interesting stride. His arms are actually in almost a circular motion, which is not something that I really see with most runners. Right. Uh, but, but like I will tell, okay, quick story. I am a tennis player. I'm a newbie tennis player. My daughter's always trying to teach me the proper technique. And I tell her, but Abby, if it's working, it's, yeah, absolutely. to me, it's right. And that's what I'm going to say about Owen Scott, because it is working for yeah. him. As a coach, I might say, hey, Owen, I think you should open up your hands a little more think you should be doing a little more of a scoop your arms are really up there but look at where he yeah. is this guy's a state qualifier from the past and he is a solid runner. well inevitably jennifer you and i do state meet every year mm -hmm. and we always watch somebody who's qualified for the state championships and we watch their style and we think how in the world and they just go down the track Absolutely. blazing so whatever worked you know I, yeah we do critique kids and as a coach you know we want them to do the right thing but if it works for you go for it and please know <laughs> owen and all of you this was not a negative critique no, no, on him. It's no, just no, an no. observation that he yeah. runs differently and it's clearly oh, working. Oh, it works for him. <laughs> uh, very good stride, by the way, Mr. Scott. I'm impressed with the <laughs> distance you're getting with each yeah, of those running strides. Watch him go and he is going to win a big time event here at the Ada Invitational and he wins it with ease. Owen Scott from Van Wert, your mile champion. Back here at War Memorial Park for the girls. Four by 100 meter relay, a speed event. Four runners, one lap around the track, Jennifer. In lane three, we have Upper Scioto Valley, lane four, Temple Christian, lane five, Kenton, and lane six is Ada. Two heats in the girls, four by 100 meter relay. These are quick events. Boy, they get around the track and they just go. And our good friend, the rain, has stopped for right now. So these girls are going to get a chance to run in some nice weather here. Of course, the and start and the handoffs, two essential things to make these races successful. Absolutely pertinent to have both of those. Good exchange for the lead runners right there. The first handoff as they go down the back stretch. That's Kenton in the lead right now. Looks like Temple Christian is currently in second. Temple Christian with a very young team, three freshmen and one sophomore on this relay team. Yeah, they'll take their lumps right now, but as the girls get older and get more experience and uh, continue to get in the weight room, those freshmen will turn into very good competitors for the Pioneers. Well, of course, Temple Christian doesn't even have a track, so they have right. to travel elsewhere, but that has not deterred them. They've no. had state champions <laughs> in the past. Yeah, absolutely. So, so don't put them beside. Also, don't forget about Kenton. Take a look at this anchor, Kira Ray, blazing down the track. The Wildcats are going to win the first heat in the girls four by 100 meter relay followed by Temple Christian followed by the Ada Bulldogs. It's the second heat here at War Memorial Park in the Ada Invitational in the girls four by 100 meter relay. We saw the Kenton Wildcats win the first heat. Who's in the field for the second heat, Jennifer? In lane one, we have Corey Rawson. Lane two is Carrie. Lane three, Bluffton. Lane four, Van Wert. Lane five, Spencerville. Lane six, Allen East. Lane seven, Arlington. And lane eight, Fostoria, Van Wert, top seed time coming in. Uh, just like we had in the 4x2, <laughs> Spencerville is going to be chasing him down. <laughs> so uh, a little rivalry between those two schools, and we'll see how the Cougars do from Van Wert in the girls' 4x100 meter relay. Don't count out lane six. Allen East <laughs> is leading off with Rylan Jones. Well, <laughs> anytime Rylan Jones is in a relay, they got a shot. She is an incredible athlete. So a good start for all the girls here in the 4 by 100 meter relay as they come out of the blocks of blazing. Let's watch these clean handoffs. And Allen East with a great handoff as they take the lead here. And 
look in the middle of the track. I believe that is Van Wert. I could be wrong, but we're That's waiting to right. see. Yeah, that was a really strong second leg for them. Really moved them up where they really wanted to be right now. Yeah, and she ran that really well down the back stretch. So nice strategy there by the Cougars. And it is going to be a tight race as they come down the home stretch. So that's Kendra Deering who is anchoring. Bluffton has Maya McDougal. And Allen East says here they're anchoring with Aubrey Young. So you see Van Wert, the WBL school, and then followed by three NWC schools. You want to talk about something to watch for, watch that NWC meet next weekend as those three schools are going to be competing big time. Back here at War Memorial Park, the girls did a great job in their 4 by 100 meter relay, and now it's two heats of the boys' 4 by 100 meter relay. That's right. We had a lot of 4 by ones to watch, which is always so much fun. And in heat one, it's Arlington. In heat uh, lane two, rather, of heat one is Arlington. Lane three is Van Wert. Lane four, Lima Central Catholic. Lane five, Kenton. Lane six, Cary. Lane seven, New Knoxville. And lane eight, Upper Seda Valley. And just a reminder, Danny, these are these are not f these, there's no prelims. So right, right. basically you can come out of heat one and if your time is fast enough, you can move yourself into those scoring spots. Absolutely. We talked about that earlier before the meet. I, I was talking to one of the officials from the meet and I said I love the way they're doing this with the timed heats. So uh, you're right. A team in this heat can win the whole thing. Close handoffs there. It appears that new Knoxville in seven is your current leader. Wow. Take a look at Jalen McGinnis. Really he moving down the track. flying down the track. Third handoffs all look pretty good right there. So smooth transition into the two and three runners as they come to the anchor leg. Looks to me like Kenton is currently your leader right now. And I apologize, that actually was not New Knoxville before. That was Carey and Eli Steen that I mentioned. But wow, take a look at the battle between Kenton and Carey. What a battle as they come across Ooh. the line. That was too close to call, Jennifer, as Kenton and Carey battle for the title in the boys' 4x100 meter relay. Back here for heat two of the boys' 4x100 meter relay at the Ada Invitational. Danny Holbrook, Jennifer Beck, and we've saw some great races. No exception in this one, Jennifer, as Alan Easton Bluffton battling out for another title. That's right. We have Alan Easton lane two, Mohawk in one, Spencerville in lane three. Bluffton, your top seed time is in four. Faustoria, the second top seed time in five. Ada is in six. Corey Rawson in seven. Delphus Jefferson is in eight. And you mentioned Alan East. They do not come in with one of the top seed times, but such was also the case in the 4x200, and we saw what happened right. there. And not to say that other teams can't win it. We just saw a brilliant run in the 4x2 between those two schools, and I don't expect anything less for this race. So the runners have been called to the blocks. And we are underway in the boys' 4x100 meter relay. Four runners, one lap around the track, and it's all about handoffs and speed in this event. That's right. I think right now, Faustoria and maybe Ada even were your top. But look at these guys running now that back stretch. You're right. The home team, the Ada Bulldogs, a nice job of getting up amongst the leaders there. Let's see how they finish in a great handoff there by all the teams. Oh. And one, uh, I take that back. One athlete went down on the track. We'll have to see who that is and how that affects this race. Actually, Here they come. That might be the, might be the Bluffton runner. And here comes Trey Hensley from wow. Allen East. He's got the lead, Jennifer, and he's being pushed on the outside. That's Hensley. Paul Storia. <laughs> and Allen East wins another relay event here at the Ada Invitational. Unfortunate situation for Bluffton. I didn't actually see that exchange, but something happened, and their second runner is on the ground. So that did affect them, I would yes. imagine, with the rest of their race. And that was the First Bluffton goal, Pirates. So we'll make sure and we'll get a report on that young man, see how he is as Alan East wins the boys 4 by 100 meter relay. Back here at War Memorial Park, it's the girls' turn on the track for the 400-meter dash. One of the, if not the toughest event of the day. It's one lap around the track, Jennifer, and it takes everything you've got to win this event. It absolutely does. It's basically a sprint, though it is hard to sprint an entire lap around the track. But these ladies are going to do their best, and here's who we have in lane one from Corey Ross and Chelsea McVetta. Lane two, 
Spencerville's Lillian Strayer, Lane 3 from Van Wert, Olivia Voss, Lane 4, Emerson Gurney from Mohawk, Lane 5, Jordan Smith of Ada, Lane 6, Delaney Buxton of Kenton, Lane 7, Tatum Marks of Lima Central Catholic, and Lane 8, Addie Albers of New Knoxville. So a lot of different styles on how you run this event. You'll see some kids get out and try to take a lead and try to hold off the field, and you see other kids who will kind of stay back and uh, just run their race and then at the end just pour it on. So different styles for different runners, uh, but always a classic race in the 400-meter dash. Only one runner did not start in blocks. I'm going to guess that she's actually a middle distance runner, not a sprinter. Yeah, I was going to say, maybe you're absolutely right. It's, uh, it's a different preference for certain kids. They like those blocks, some of them, some of them don't. Uh, but uh, we're going to see a great race here in the girls' 400-meter dash. And that runner who didn't start in blocks is, I believe, leading at the moment. That is Jordan Smith from Ada. But here's where it tells the story in the final 200. <laughs> you are absolutely correct, Jennifer. The final 200 meters in this race is absolutely a gut check for all the athletes trying to win this event. Look at that. Three young ladies right there who are coming around that curve. Lane three and lane four we're keeping our eyes on. Olivia Voss from Van Wert and Emerson Gurney from Mohawk. So it is Van Wert and Mohawk and the young girl from Ada on the outside as she's coming strong trying to win the event on her home track and it looks like she got second as she falls second to the young lady from Mohawk I believe. So a great run by all those athletes in the girls 400 meter dash and we come back it'll be the boys turn in the 400 meter dash right here on the Ada Invitational. Up next on the track, it's the boys' 400-meter dash. Today's title sponsor is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken home style happens here. So we saw the girls run a great 400-meter dash, Jennifer, and it's the boys' turn now. That's right. Weather is favorable at the moment. <laughs> uh, we are not being... Uh, rained on at this moment. <laughs> However, oh, what we've had so Jennifer. far today is that could change by the end of this one lap around the track, but certainly I think everybody would love to just be able to dry out for a bit. On the track, which does look to be a little bit wet, it doesn't look completely dry down there, we have in lane one Noah Stewart of Spencerville, lane two Lawson Flores of Lima Central Catholic, lane three Brody Erickson of Ada, four Riley Newton of Hardin Northern, and he comes in with the fastest seed time of a 52.9 Zero. Lane 5, Gavin Bogart of Bluffton. 6 is Garrett Reinhardt of Mohawk. 7, Ty Coombs of Kenton. And 8, Mason Schimpt of Mohawk. Yeah, so a great field. You look at that field, and what st stands out to me is the young freshman, Lawson Flores from Lima Central Catholic. A big moment for him and a big invitational. It's always fun when you get a freshman and you recognize that they've got the ability to run yes. certain races because he's in the fastest heat now. Great and point. the coach is thinking, I'm going to be able to do so much more even in the next three years as well. <laughs> we have seen so many great runners come out of this event. And uh, for him to be in this event as a freshman, the coaches have got to be high on that young man. And as you said, this is the fast heat. So we'll see how that young man does. So they have been called to their marks. So we are missing one runner. Lane seven is empty. Ty Coombs from Kenton is not in, in his lane. So one runner is out of the field. And we are underway in the boys' 400 meter dash. Some really good seed times coming into this one. Uh, but our top one, Riley Newton from Hardin Northern, the sophomore with a 52.9. And let's see if we can see some records fall today here in the Ada Invitational. Well, Gavin Bogart got out the fastest in that first 200. As we're getting around the uh, straightaway, though, here on the backside, Hard Northern's Newton is doing his thing. And now, like I said with the girls, Danny, this is the point where we really see what happens in this race. Yeah, we see uh, Newton taking a little bit of a lead as he comes around the last curve. And he's starting to pull away from the field. And a nice run by the sophomore from Hard Northern as he is pushing himself. And here comes Bluffton down the track. It's Gavin Bogart. It's Riley Newton. And Riley Newton from Harden Northern is going to win the boys' 400-meter dash. 
And we're back here at War Memorial Park for the Ada Invitational. Danny Holbrook, Jennifer Beck, and Jennifer, this event coming up on the track right now, the 300-meter hurdles, maybe the toughest race in all of track and field. Absolutely agree with you, Danny. So much grit and uh, endurance is sure. needed for this race, and I've never run this race, but I've heard people say that once you get to that last hurdle, it looks so much <laughs> taller than the rest of the other hurdles. Here's what we have in this heat. Macy Hupf of Cary in lane one. Grace Flutterhon, Flutterjohn of Spencerville in two. Azanet Hatter from Fostoria in three. Ryland Jones from Allen East. The multi-time state qualifier will be in lane four. In lane five, Mariah King of Ada. Six is Aubrey Burkholder of Bluffton. Seven, Addie Howdenscheid of Kenton. And eight is Maddie Krieger of Corey Rawson. And there you see Ryland Jones from Allen East getting out and really attacking this course as she has taken the lead here in the girls 300 meter hurdles just looks effortless jennifer when she goes across those hurdles and to say effortless and the 300 hurdles yes. in the same sentence is a real testament to her sure. because of how hard this is but i've really enjoyed watching her growth in these past three years she is a junior she's made it to state freshman and sophomore years and to even see how the hard work she's put in to continue to improve is really Absolutely. impressive and she is running away from the field as she has one final hurdle to clear. And she does exactly that. Ryland Jones from Allen East wins the girls 300 meter hurdles in convincing fashion here at the Ada Invitational. Bluffton second, Spencerville third. Back here at the Ada Invitational where our title sponsor today is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphi, St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style happens here. It's the boys' 300-meter hurdles, and we just saw the record holder from 1988, Doug Schweingruber, here in the crowd watching his children run. So kind of a neat thing to watch other, you know, when you see people from olden days uh, <laughs> running in the meet. Always neat also to see the record holders and yeah. to see a record from 1988 Absolutely. still stay. That is Absolutely. neat. Here's who we have not standing right now because they're down <laughs> in their blocks. Tommy Mustine from Kenton in lane one. Deshaun Settles from Faustoria in two. Brody Baker of Cary in three. Jay Schroeder of New Knoxville is your top seed time coming in with a 40.68. Kind of close to that 39.2 yes, uh, record. He is in four. Carson Cruz from Bluffton in five. Keegan Putoff of Corey Rosson in six. Julian Gross of Ada in seven. And Trenton Heacock of Arlington in lane eight. So a nice start for all the young men. And there is that young man from New Knoxville, Jay Schrader, getting out of the blocks and uh, starting to take the lead on the curve there as he's over that hurdle first. You know, interesting to look at him. He's not a real tall guy. He's not. But that, he's got great form over he those. absolutely does. Watch that front leg come across there. And it is a real battle right now between two athletes, New Knoxville and Corey Rawson in the boys' 300-meter hurdles. Oh, that was a nice finish, nice clean over that last hurdle for Jay from New Knoxville, your winner. He was fantastic. Up next on the track, it's the girls' 800-meter run. It's two laps around the track and an outstanding field of these young ladies trying for an 800-meter title. 26 ladies in all running this. This is seat two of two, and here's who we have. In lane one, Quinlan Spearman of Kenton, Leah Harder of Kenton, and Sarah Verville of Van Wert. In two, Grace Gokey of Spencerville, Kate Ernst of Arlington, Izzy Kratz of Arlington, and Emma Garver of Corey Rawson. In lane three, Ella Armstrong of Bluffton, Lydia Damascio of Ada, Allison Stuckey of Corey Rawson, and in four, Claire Johnson of Mohawk, Emily Morrissey of Lima Central Catholic, and Lexi Greer of Spencerville. And Grace Gokey comes in from Spencerville with the best time right now of 227. And you always wonder, uh, Jennifer, this is the race where you have to ask yourself, how hard do I go in, in, in your first lap knowing uh, that everybody's coming after you in, in, in the second lap? That's right. This is the one where in that second lap, the endurance has to kick yeah. in, has to keep you going. Um, again, we talk about uh, non-sprint races that are actually sure. sprints. Well, uh, you can't go too slow in this if you want to time, do well. No, oh, and the girls' 800-meter record is from Minster, young lady by the last name of Olding. Sunny Olding. Yep, Superstar runner back yep. in those Starting days, 2004. 
I do want to make a comment. Back in the 1600 meter run, I miscalled that and I need to apologize. Um, I have to admit that runner did not look like June Essinger and it wasn't <laughs> it June, was Essinger. June Essinger. So, Nora Matthews, I apologize to you. You ran a great race. Yes, she did. You did a great job. 526.77 was her time. We'll do some results later on during the third 200, but I want to make sure that was evident. I apologize to Nora Matthews. We are, as we mentioned, we're way, way, yes, way up we high. Are. We're way and those up, runners yeah. look really small, and we don't have anything that's actually giving us indication of who it is. So Bluffton's freshman won that one, Nora Matthews, in the 1600. Fantastic job by that young lady. And yeah, we, uh, absolutely. So here they come. They finish the first lap, and the young lady from Mohawk has taken the lead here at the end of lap one. That's right, we got Mohawk and then we have Spencerville. And like you mentioned, Danny, now's the point where we're gonna see how each lady's uh, their strategy, strategy yes. comes in play. You know, what is it? Are there some ladies here who knew that my first lap is not my strongest lap? And that's what we're gonna we're gonna see what happens now. At WSN, we are pleased to announce new pricing for the WSN streaming service. For only $8 per month, you can watch WSN from anywhere at any time. Sign up today at app.wsn.tv, also available on Roku and Apple TV. So a, a nice job here, the young lady from Mohawk. And it looks like, I think, and I believe that is... That is Spencerville right Spencerville, there. Spencerville, you are correct. Making the move right before the curve. So really, she got that in right at the right point. 200 left to go. So here's the point where you just go. You got to kick it in and give it everything that's left. And that's what we see Grace from Spencerville doing right yeah, now. Yeah, Grace Goki coming on strong as she's taking the lead in the second lap. And she's trying to hold the field off. And, you know, a lot of times we see this event the girls stretch out a lot but there's the one through five is very close in this race look at bluffton uh also making her way in here trying to get in but grace goki just got her head up chest out kicking those legs making her way to the finish line first fantastic job by grace goki from spencerville the bearcat wins the girls 800 meter run here at the ada invitational and I do believe that might have been Kenton third. I need to make sure. I don't want to miss call things again. <laughs> You're fine. So we had Spencer Little first, Mohawk second, and I do believe that was Kenton in third. Back here at the Ada Invitational here at War Memorial Park for the boys' 800 meter dash. And quite a few athletes in this field, Jennifer, as the rain is coming down a little harder than the girls had to run their 800 meter in. You are exactly right, Danny. We have all the plastic coverings back out over our papers and. Uh, once again, all of the umbrellas <laughs> are out in the stands, but not on the track. These runners, they have to deal with whatever the elements are, and they just change every other race. They it do. seems like the weather is different. Well, the rain is steady right now for the second heat of the boys' 800-meter run, and here are your runners. From Spencerville, Mitchell Adams in lane one, along with Hunter Faust of Corey Rawson, Travion Cousin of Fostoria, and Carson Reese of Corey Rawson. In two, Rylan Miller of Van Wert, Caleb Couch of Harden Northern, Ethan Yoder of Kenton, Hayden Parker of Mohawk. In three, Mason Selliver of Ada, Jet Loser of Mohawk, Noah Spath of Van Wert, and Logan Clark of Temple Christian. And in lane four, A.J. Boop of Spencerville, Wyatt Helton of Upper Scioto Valley, and Cade Regal of Arlington. And we take a look at Rylan Miller from Van Wert with a 159 time coming into this. Of course, anytime you can drop below that two-minute mark yes, is yeah. an achievement that they are all sh shooting for. And he's already at that 159 mark. This point in the season, it's pretty good. Oh, the rain has just picked up even more. <laughs> Man. And Jennifer, I would tell you who the record holder is, but my paper is so wet that the name <laughs> is smudged, so I can't really tell you that. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 the, what we're dealing with here, folks. We, um, whatever it is, if it rains, we're here. If it's sunny, yeah. we're here. If it would snow at this point, we're still here. But uh, the rain is pretty steady right now, and also pretty steady. Uh, look at that runner right there. We've already mentioned him, Rylan. Miller from Van Wert, clearly in the lead at this point. And you look at that young man, Jennifer. You can tell he spends time in the weight room. Absolutely. He has got a tremendous runner's body. 
and you look at his strides, and he looks so comfortable right now. Rylan Miller is looking further than just this Absolutely. race. Of course, he wants to win this race, and he wants to be doing well in this Invitational, but clearly he's got his sights set on what's coming up in weeks to come, and that's what he's looking at right now in his runs. Yeah, he looks really comfortable right now as he leads the field in the boys' 800-meter run here at the Ada Invitational. Looks like we've got Spencerville in second place right now, and I believe that might be hard northern in third, but it is too far for me to, to <laughs> say right. for sure. Yeah. I believe that's Caleb Couch from Harden Northern in the third position. So Harden Northern, a smaller school, but a fine showing here today. As with a lot of the Harden County schools, which are smaller than Van Wert, some of the bigger schools are really doing well today here at the 8 Invitational. Absolutely. Now that Spencerville runner is sneaking up on, on uh, Rylan Jones, but or Rylan Jones, Rylan Miller. Sorry <laughs> about that. Rylan Miller. Uh, but Rylan, no one's going to catch him. He no. is going to make it. There he is. He is your championship. Oh, but take a look what's happening for third place. At the buzzer, I wanted to say. <laughs> right. Kenton moving his way in there. Good job, guys. No, apropos, Jennifer, at the buzzer, a perfect way <laughs> to describe that. A fantastic finish in the boys' 800-meter run. Back here at War Memorial Park as we continue the Ada Invitational here and Ada for the big Invitational this weekend. Danny Holbrook, Jennifer Beck, it is Heat three of four in the girls' 200-meter dash, and a quick field for this one, Jennifer. Lane one, Kylie Clem of Hardin Northern. Two, Sophia Klein of Cary. Three, Tatum Marks of Lima Central Catholic. Four, Aubrey Young of Allen East. Five, Mal Malia Payne of Fostoria. Six, Kelsey Bursby of Cary. Seven, Lauren Dirth of Bluffton. And eight, Jada Smith of Arlington. Danny, the rain continues <laughs> to fall. It has not let up since that 800. No, it has not. I just got a text and somebody asked me, how, how's the meat going? I said, we're still here in the rain and it's going <laughs> swimmingly. <laughs> my grandson has a school presentation <laughs> later today and I just texted my daughter to say, can I show up in wet, my wet clothing? <laughs> what is the protocol here? <laughs> Are you worried about the way my hair looks? Because I'm not. <laughs> well, these girls who are running, I don't think they're worried about the way their hair looks either. No, these kids have been great competitors today, regardless of the wind, rain, or whatever. I guess the saving grace, Jennifer, is we've had nice warm temperatures today. Absolutely. Despite the rain, it's been very, very pleasant. Alan East, Aubrey Young, take a look at her. Absolutely. Aubrey Young with a really nice run as she wins heat three of four in the girls 200 meter dash. We're back here at Ada for heat four of four in the girls 200 meter dash. And folks, this field in this heat is going to be fantastic. And I'll let Jennifer explain to you why we're so excited about this race. <laughs> I, I, my first thought is this is the star studded heat. I know, I mean, right? <laughs> we have a lot of state qualifiers who are in this heat. A lot of really solid runners that we've already seen do yes, successful yes. things today. Here's who we have. Lane one, Lillian Strayer from Spencerville. Two, Jordan Smith of Ada. Three, Audra McMichael of Spencerville. Lane four, not sure if you heard this name yet, Kendra Deering of I Van Wert. Her, yeah. Lane five, though, right next to her with staunch competition, Macy Johnson from Van Wert, a teammate. Then we've got lane six. We took away the hurdles. We're just going to let her run. <laughs> Ryland Jones of Allen East, Maya McDougall from Bluffton in seven, and Addison Wright from Fostoria in lane eight. And a lot of times we can maybe have an idea who we think is going to win a race, but I'm telling you, Jennifer, this one's up for grabs. Hey, we are missing someone. Uh, looks like Ryland say, Jones like, is yes. not actually in this one. So we don't have her, but we do have Kendra Deering and Macy Johnson, both from Van Wert. 25.6 and 25.8, respectively, are the teams coming in. Take a look at Macy Johnson right now. And the rain is really coming down, and it's going to be Van Wert 1 and 2 in the girls' 200-meter dash. What a race for those two young ladies. They get to compete against each other every day, Jennifer. That's always a blessing. When you get to compete against some of the top runners in the state of Ohio, what a great way to improve. Back here at War Memorial Park for the boys' 200-meter dash. This is heat three of four as the rain continues to come down. And, folks, when I say it's coming down, it's really, really coming down. That, Danny, <laughs> I was just hiding underneath a plastic uh, 
container that holds some of our gear just to try and get some <laughs> reprieve from the rain. No reprieve for the runners, though. They are in the elements completely. In this heat, we have John Stransberry in lane one from Mohawk, Preston Rushling of New Knoxville in two, Griffin Gunter of Van Wert in three, Bryce Puckett of Carey in four, Jace Lindemann, Delphus Jefferson in five. We've heard that Lindemann name yes, before. We uh, Gavin Barth of Mohawk in six, Braxton McMichael of Spencerville in seven, and Marlon Lopez from Kenton in lane eight so the rain continues to fall but the athletes continue to shine here on the track at the Ada Invitational uh, the stands have uh, taken a hit as far as the <laughs> amount of folks here but the hardy folks are still here with their umbrellas out as they're watching their student athletes compete and a good start by all the athletes here and it is lane four in the lead right now. Lane five, we don't have Lindemann from Delphus Jefferson, but yes, lane four, Bryce Puckett from Carey. Bryce Puckett, a, a tall sprinter, so uh, long legs there for that young man as he wins heat three of four in the boys' 200-meter dash. And we're back here for heat four of the boys' 200-meter dash. And Jennifer, when we talk about fast times, there's not a time over 24 seconds in this in this heat, excuse me, in this event in the 200 meter dash. That's right. We go from a 22.72 to a 23.76. And as you know, a start, a turn, even yes. the placement of head can make changes in the that how we go. We got some great, great runners in this heat. Starting off in lane one, Jackson Friesner from Allen East. Lane two, Ryan O'Neill of Faustoria. Three, Ison Schaefer of Allen East. He's been uh, instrumental in helping his team win both the 4x2 and the 4x1 today. Griffin Stackhouse of Bluffton in four, Jackson Brown of Ada in five, Riley Newton of Harden Northern in six, Logan Jolliffe of Ada in seven, and Kaiser Young of Bluffton in eight. And I mentioned Eisen Schaefer. I should also mention Friesner, who was also on those races. Yes, absolutely. So here they go. And a great start for the boys 200 meter dash as they come around the curve, which I absolutely love to watch these guys come down the home stretch. Wow, look at Griffin Stackhouse. Now we talk about people missing. Eisen Schaefer's not in this race. Man, and Griffin Stackhouse. Looks like he just got out of the shower. Yeah, but look at him go. Well, he just showered the rest of the competition and he wins the boys 200 meter dash. Back here at War Memorial Park, just a couple events to go as we round up this invitational here at Ada. It's the girls two mile run and a star studded field for this event, Jennifer. We have 15 ladies who are running in this event. In lane one, Chloe Etzinger of Cary, Lexi Dyke, Deitemeyer of Van Wert and Elizabeth Hans from Bluffton, as well as Hope Hamilton of Spencerville. In two, Addie Manns of Canton. She comes in with a 12.00.91. I'm sure she would love to see that 11 minute mark yes, today. Yes, absolutely. Also, Avery Teal of Faustoria, Reagan Zender of Arlington, and Kaylin Weasling of Bluffton. In three, Araya Fenning of New Knoxville, Noelle Byram of Van Wert, Grace Bianchi of Cary, and Megan Miller of Spencerville. And in four, Kaya Heinball of Allen East, Allie Sethledge of Arlington, and Emily Simon of Corey Rawson. Rain continues to come down here at the Ada Invitational. Not as uh, heavy as it was, but it's a steady rain. Uh, the athletes have been fantastic today, Jennifer, and you've got some results from some previous events here at the Ada Invitational. That's right. We'll give you some rankings, uh, the, the scores leading up through the 300 hurdles. So at this point, it has changed, but this is what we have for you at the moment. Your top five teams as of after event 34. In the females, Kenton is in fifth place with 46. Spencerville in fourth place with 47. Carey is in third with 50. Van Wert is in second with 60. And the Bluffton ladies are leading at their home, or I'm sorry, this is Ada. This is not Bluffton. The Bluffton <laughs> ladies the are yeah, leading right. at the Ada meet with 95 points. And in the boys rankings right now after the 300 hurdles, Allen East is in fifth place with 38 points. Arlington fourth with 40. Faustoria is in third with 45. Ada second with 46 and Bluffton boys are winning with 73. We have quite a few uh, results that we can give. It looks like I, uh, our leader right now, that is, I believe, sorry folks, I was looking yeah, down, Addie well, Mans of Kenton. Addie Mans of Kenton, you're absolutely right. Yeah. 
All right, so let's take a look at uh, something completely different than this, the 100-meter dash, your top five finalists. In finishers, Arlington's Alexis Greaser in fifth, Alan East Aubrey Young with fourth, Maya McDougall of Bluffton with third, Audra McMichael from Spencerville with second, and your winner in the 100-meter dash with a time of 12.66 from Van Wert, Kendra Deering. In the 400-meter dash, fifth place, Spencerville's Lillian Strayer, Fourth place, Kenton's Delaney Buxton. Third place, Van Wert, Olivia Voss. Second place, Ada's Jordan Smith. And your winner from Mohawk, run, running 103.78, is Emerson Gurney. Hold on, folks, my results are wet. <laughs> In the 1,600-meter run, fifth place finisher from Arlington, Izzy Kretz. Fourth place from Kerry Chloe Etzinger. Third place, Araya Fenning from New Knoxville. Second place, Addie Manns from Kenton, who is Raya and Addie both running in this race. And your winner from Bluffton, running 526.77, it is Nora Matthews. So Addie Manns continues to lead the girls' two mile run here. She's getting that lead a little bit more as the top three runners are right there together, but uh, she continues to lead the girls' two-mile run. A few more results for you in the 100-meter hurdles. In fifth place from Van Wert, Harper Roop. Fourth place from Kerry, Kelsey Bursby. In third from Corey Rawson, Maddie Krieger. Second from Bluffton, Aubrey Burkholder. And your winner from Allen East, running 15.80 seconds, Rylan Jones. We've heard that name a lot today. Rylan Jones has been spectacular for the Allen East Mustangs. And we'll just say her name again here as we bring you the 300-meter <laughs> hurdle results. Fifth place finisher, Addie Howdenshield of Kenton. Second place, Mariah King of Ada. Third, Grace Flederjohn of Spencerville. Second, Aubrey Burkholder of Bluffton. And your winner, 47.43 seconds from Allen East, Rylan Jones. <laughs> She is something special. I look forward to seeing her in the postseason as she makes her way towards the University of Dayton for the state track and field meet. Yeah, you know, I think this is a good time to mention that we do follow the athletes all the way to that postseason, all the way to the state meet. I think we are the only television we station yeah. in the state of Ohio other than your um, OHSAA and FHS broadcast. We are the only ones who will bring you the full state meet, and this year we'll be doing that with Division Three, with highlights from Division Two and Division One at the University of Dayton, which is That's different right. this year. Yep. That's right. The uh, track at Jesse O Stadium in Ohio State is being renovated, or the the, the tr reno I don't know if renovated is the correct word. It's being fixed up. Fixed yeah, up. yeah, yeah. Let's just go with that. So that forces the state meet to move, and this year it will be at Welcome Stadium in Dayton. And five laps to go. Addie Manns continues to lead in the girls' two-mile run. Back here as we finish up the girls' two-mile run, Addie Manns from Kenton in command of this with two laps to go, Jennifer, and she looks really comfortable out there after six laps. Absolutely. She's got more than a 100-meter lead right now, and I think it's worth noting what the weather has done <laughs> just in the amount of time these ladies have been running. Yeah. It's completely different right now when that, than when that gun kind of went off to start this race. Yeah, we, we start this race, and it is absolutely pouring the rain. We get to about the fifth lap mark and the sun comes out and it gets really warm and here we sit as the sun's shining down still getting a little bit of rain but i'll take this weather any day that's right this is really the kind of the track brother we all want right, and right. we've been waiting the whole meet to get to it but with the way the meet has gone i'm not going to say it's going to stay like this for the rest of the meet though it would be okay so here's what we have right now as you mentioned addy mans from kenton is in a very commanding lead new knoxville's araya fenning is in second place right now you can't see her in your camera right now right. because of the, the distance uh, difference, but you will eventually see her. And then third place right now is Carrie. Our title sponsor for today's Ada Invitational is Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style, happens here. Addie Mann's just a sophomore. I'm really enjoying seeing the... the uh, the direction that she's going she yeah, could just you know go off and and slow down and not really push super hard because she does have a really sizable lead but she's she's <laughs> picking things up right now she right now she's racing against herself Absolutely. for a personal time and you watch that young lady and she has not slowed down and she has lapped several of the other competitors and she is going to be fantastic she is fantastic but over the next few years we're going to be talking about that young lady 
for a long time. I'm impressed with the way she's uh, lengthening her stride, the right thing to do on that back side of the track, utilizing her length that she can get as she is preparing for the final 200 in this race. I wonder if she's dried off. <laughs> well, we haven't dried off yet. It's getting nice and warm up here, but uh, everything is wet here on the table. And, uh, <laughs> All right, she's making her way around for that final curve here. Not showing any sign of slowing down anytime soon. Got to be pretty nice that she's going to eye that finish line with the sunshine. Absolutely, and here she comes down the home stretch, and she will get a fantastic round of applause from the folks here at the Aid Invitational as Addie Manns from Kenton Senior High School is going to win this race running away, pardon the pun, but uh, that is exactly what she's doing. And you are hearing that applause. Maybe you're not because actually what's happened is we lost a lot <laughs> right. of the a lot of the people fans did get up and go and we had that big spread of a lot of uh, a lot of rain all right she has finished it where is our second place runner that's the good question yeah, we are waiting <laughs> all right jacob can you go back and let's take a look at fenning from new knoxville as she makes her way in to finish in second place and she's ran a fantastic race she's just in the same race with Addie mans and uh, uh these two young ladies have done a great job today in the girls two mile run all right eddie man's in first and second place is going to go to new knoxville and then carrie is going to finish in third back here at war memorial park it's the boys turn for the two mile run the 3200 meter run here uh eight, i started to say 16 laps that would be a long run but it's <laughs> eight laps around the track jennifer and a uh, a big field of a lot of runners in this event that's right 22 runners in this event here's who we have in lane one andrew laudick of van Wert, ethan de souza of ada henry lee of spencerville damon zimmerly of Kerry, and bryson barth of fostoria in two owen scott your top seed time runner with a 9 37 79 he's in two meyer kyron of Mohawk, Ethan Rawl of Kenton, Adam Hopkins of Kenton, Jacob Henson of Ada, DJ Stevens of Arlington. In three, Theo Andreas of Bluffton, Grant Welty of Corey Rawson, Levi Fensel of Bluffton, Riley Miller of Cary, Cole Neese of Allen East, and Miles Joseph of Upper Scioto Valley. And in four, Braden Cleveland of Mohawk, Tanner Braun of Spencerville, Andrew Lira of Fostoria, Noah McCoy of Upper Scioto Valley, and Griffin Anderson of Arlington. So we already saw uh, Owen Scott from Van Wert run a fantastic job in the mile earlier today, and uh, he's going to go for a two-mile run here. And it'll be interesting to see if he's going to go for the record because the record is a 939 mm. set back in 2011. And Scott comes in with a seat time of 937.79. Unfortunately, we do not have the ability to see the live results right, right away. So right. we will not know. Um, I would say that you should go to mile split and see if you can find the results there. Um, but... That'd be pretty neat. I would uh, love to see that if record If we have fall. a record break. Yeah, that would be fantastic. And, and look, we got no rain right now. The sun is out to a point. Uh, we've got nice breeze blowing. So we've had every bit of weather today, but we continue to stay here broadcasting this meet for you folks because we appreciate your support. So when the girls' two miles started, it was raining. <laughs> when the girls' two mile finished, it was sunny and hot. The boys' two mile is about to start. It is windy and overcast, yes. and the temperature has once again dropped. Yes, it has. And I'll take it right now <laughs> over the rain any time. But it's eight laps around the track, and these kids are chomping at the bit to get started on this one. One more event after this, the girls and boys 4x400 four meter relay. Before we wrap this one up, the Ada Invitational from Ada, Ohio. And these folks have done a great job of putting this meet on today. A large crowd out here. A uh, nice 50-50 giveaway already and uh, lots of kids, lots of adults, and uh, a great thing for Ada High School and the community. They are off and they are going, and I wonder if we're going to see Owen Scott do the same thing that he did in the 1600. He really set the pace right from the beginning and made a plan of what he wanted to do, executed it well. We see him again. Yeah. Yeah, jumping up to the front to a point. Yeah. Kind of up there, but uh, yep, he's going to be your leader right here as they move over. <laughs> he says, look, 
I'm going to run and I'm going to make everybody chase me. And I like that strategy. You've got some results from uh, earlier events here at the Aid Invitational. That's right. We're not going to get all of them to you. So you'll have to go online to find all of the results. But here's what we can bring you for now in the 100 meter dash, finishing in fifth place. These are the men. Fostoria's Braden Harrison. In fourth place, Trey Hensley of Allen East. In third place, Logan Jolliffe of Ada. Second place, Jackson Brown of Ada. And your winner from Bluffton, Griffin Stackhouse, running 11.34 seconds. In the 110 hurdles, in fifth place, Brody Baker of Cary. Fourth place, Keegan Putoff of Corey Ross. And third, Carson Cruz of Bluffton. Second, Jay Schroeder of New Knoxville. And your winner, Jackson Brown of Ada, 15.08 seconds. In the girls, actually, I'm trying to give you boys results. I got the girls <laughs> discus. I'll just tell you, girls discus in top five, Lizzie Suter of Bluffton. Fourth place, Rory Youngpeter of Bluffton. Third place, Sierra Studer of Allen East. Second place, Karma Williams of Fostoria. And your champion, Abby Bushong of Cary, throwing 131.04. I'll give you the discus. Oh, Danny, I'm reading things wrong. I'm going to blame it on the water. <laughs> Forget that. Like, forget Absolutely. all of the, Forget everything I just told you. Let's go to the finals of the discus throw. Nobody, if okay. they were here and saw our desk <laughs> and how wet everything is, they would completely understand, Jennifer. I may have spent part of this meet with my head underneath a big plastic container yes, that we did. hold zip ties in. All right, here are your discus finals for the girls. Lizzie Suter from Bluffton finished in fifth place. Rory Youngpeter of Bluffton in fourth. Sierra Studer from Allen East in third. Karma Williams of Fostoria in second. And your champion, still the same person before, but the final throw time is a bit, or throw length is a bit different. Abby Bushong of Cary wins the discus row 128.06. Did I just see Owen Scott Clance at his watch? Yes, you did. And after two laps, Owen Scott continues to lead. But I'm going to tell you this. There are four <laughs> runners directly behind him that look really comfortable. And we could see a fantastic finish in this one as Owen Scott being tracked down by four other runners. But he continues to lead. And that's the thing we need to remember in races like this. Owen Scott's a standout runner. He is standing out. He's running yes, he out. Is. He is out there. But the guys behind him, like you said, those three guys are running a great race as well and it's a lot of fun to see what happens uh with them in fact we're already seeing a lead change maybe yeah the right the there on that position, straightaway yeah yeah all right, I'll give you a few more results here. We have the boys 4 by 800 meter relay, which happened way back at the beginning. In fifth place, it was Ada. Fourth place, Corey Rawson. Third place, Mohawk. Second place, Spencerville. And your champion with a team of Owen Scott, Andrew Loddick, Noah Spath, and Roland Miller running eight minutes, 23.83 seconds. It is Van Wert. There goes Owen Scott. Five laps to go. He continues to lead, looking comfortable, checking his time <laughs> as he is going for the gold here in the boys' two-mile run. One of the fun things I find with doing local high school sports is the opportunity to follow these runners. Yes. I think that Owen Scott spent more time in the weight room than he has in the past. I'm not <laughs> saying he hasn't in no, the past. No, 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 no. But I am definitely seeing, uh, just looking at his body physique, he's got, uh, looks to me like stronger legs, stronger upper body. He's doing all the right things. Look, if we talk about it all the time, when kids come into high school athletics as freshmen, they don't understand what it takes to get to that next level. And when they do figure that out, they want to compete. They want to be the best at what they can be. And part of that is weight training and, and, and the right diet and everything that you have to do to get your body in the best shape. You're right. The, the diet, all of those things, and your dedicated athletes really do things differently than do. a lot of the other high school yep. kids. I can remember in high school, I packed my lunch every single day because I came to the point where I realized for me, the school lunch wasn't going to work sure. with my needs. And so I had to every single day pack that specific lunch so that I could run the races the way I wanted to. And here we go with four laps to go. Owen Scott has built that lead and he is running hard, checking his time as he leads in the boys two mile run. Back here, Owen Scott with two laps to go as he leads in the boys' two-mile run. And the rest of the field running a nice race, Jennifer. That's right. We got Bluffton in second place right now and another Van Root runner in third at the moment and a Mohawk runner in fourth. But they are 
quite a bit behind yes, they, Owen Scott. They are. You are correct. Owen Scott continues to lead this race. And, boy, he's really pushing himself now. And we have an unofficial time up here. We don't want to stipulate on if he's got a chance at the record. We will let you know at the end of this race. And it will be unofficial time, obviously, because of the timing down on the track. He, I'm sure, is aware of yes, yes. the reality when he's coming into this. Owen Scott, a junior. So we see he's got another year yet. Yeah, he looks tremendous right now as he comes down the home stretch with one lap to go. Owen Scott, Van Wert High School, the Cougars roaring on a big win here in the two-mile run. All right, just looked at his watch <laughs> he did, there. Yeah. He glanced back to see where the competition was, something you don't typically do, sure. but he's got plenty of room to, uh, to be able to do that kind of thing. And here it goes. And the final lap for Owen Scott as he continues to lead. Looking at his watch one more time. And the young man for Bluffton in second place running a really good race. He looks very comfortable as he continues to try and catch Owen Scott from Van Wert. That's right. The Bluffton runner, he was tucked back in third place for he quite was, a while, yes. which we talk about this uh, race philosophy. A lot of runners, they they know when they're going to when they're going to uh, give their kick and yep. what they're going to do and can feel very comfortable in that position. He is a clearly in second place Van Wert runner. The other Van Wert runner is in third. Mohawk is still in fourth. Oh, look at, look at him go. He is fantastic as he comes around the final curve here in the boys' two-mile run. Owen Scott, the Van Wert Cougar, with our unofficial time, and we are at 9.30, so we'll see how that works out here. That's unofficial. 9.39 is the record. Now, he's been running unaided. You know, this exactly, is his yes. own race. He's yeah. had really no one to push him, so he's pushing himself, doing so very well. Here he comes in, strong muscles, strong stride. Owen Scott, your champion in the 3200. And we unofficially, we have a 9.49, so we'll see where that compares. Like you said, you have to go to mile split to check that time out, but unofficially, we have him at 9.49. And you're right, there was, he, he, he had to push himself, uh, but a great race by that young man. Bluffton's runner is making his way in, and he will finish in second place. Take a look back here if we can. Let's see what this Mohawk runner, oh, I thought the Mohawk runner might get the Van Wert <laughs> runner, but I think that Van Wert is going to hold on to third, and Mohawk will get fourth. And Van Wert's going to pick up some big points here at the 8 Invitational. Owen Scott, your champion in the boys' two-mile run. And we're back here at War Memorial Park for the finale of the Ada Invitational, the final event of the afternoon for the girls. It's the 4 by 400 meter relay and quite a few schools competing in this event, Jennifer. That's right. This is the pinnacle event for some people. I know you love those sprint sprint love, races. Love, but love, love, love. Yep. Plenty of coaches will say it all comes down to the 4x4. Four four. It usually it does. And in many cases, yep. it does. Here's who we have running in this heat. In lane one, it is Ada. Lane two is Arlington. Lane three is Mohawk. Four, Van Wert. Five is Kenton. Six is Spencerville. Lane seven is Bluffton. And lane eight is Cary. And a huge shout out to our title sponsor today for the Ada Invitational, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. You can call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, home style happens here. And we saw the Lee's van unloading a ton okay. today. So the good folks here at Ada have been enjoying Lee's Famous Recipe all afternoon. On your mark. Now that's got me hungry for the ride home. It's four laps around the field. It's four athletes competing. One baton, and who gets it around the track the quickest for the girls? Four by 400 meter relay. Set. And we are underway. The final event of the afternoon here at the Ada Invitational, a wonderful day of track and field here. We've been through every weather, <laughs> well, excuse me, weather pattern. We uh, we've taken pictures. Jennifer's done a great job of taking pictures of each of our seasons we've been through. No uh, snow. No snow yet. No now, snow, you should so. have said that, Jennifer. <laughs> we've still got two, or we've still got the boys and girls here four by 400, so you never know. Macy Johnson of Van Wert appears to be in the lead right now as she still have the stagger, so you never know for sure, yeah, but she right. has just made up all of the stagger she at has. this point. Van Wert does come in with your top seat time of 4.14.60. They've got listed for their relay Macy Johnson, Lily Grevy, Sophie Gearhart, and Olivia Voss. The Cougars have had a fantastic day here at the Ada Invitational. 
<coughs> Kenton is appearing to, appearing to be in second place right now. Mohawk in third, but we'll know a little bit better. We got that stagger still going on for a little bit longer. And as Van Wert, yeah, Van Wert gets a nice handoff there. And it looks to me like Mohawk may be moving up into that second place realm as they're on the inside. Maybe third, excuse me. I uh, saw another runner. It looks maybe. Is that Bluffton on the outside? I'm not real sure if this well, is the red outfit. I do believe Mohawk had the second handoff. Yes. So they were in second place at that point. Now we're going to watch the girls move over into that first place spot. So we've got Van Wert in the lead. Kenton second. And not surprising because the seed time coming in has Van Wert as your top seed. And Kenton is your second seed. And now we've got them in the proper order down here by the finish line. The officials helping us out here. We can see exactly the order of the girls here. And you're right, Van Word is in first, Kenton is in second, Mohawk in third, Spencerville in fourth, and the hometown Ada Bulldogs are in the fifth position. Second runner is going right now. And as you know, any of you who are a relay aficionado, you know <laughs> how things work. You've got your lead off, you've got your anchor, but those two in the middle can be the mysteries yeah. of what can happen. And look at this, Kenton has taken the lead over Van Word. It's two WBL rivals battling it out here for the girls four by 400 meter title. Spencerville has moved into the third place spot. Mohawk now is in fourth. Oh, the energy of this race is always great. You can see it in the ladies as they are just chasing down that runner right in front of them. Yeah, you've got Look at the yeah. Spencerville girl. <laughs> now, you may not be able to see it at home because the first place spot is so far ahead, but Spencerville's here comes Taken Spencer Miel on the right. Place. You're absolutely right. I love the way the athletes on the other teams are rallying around the track, mm -hmm. screaming and cheering on their teammates in the final event here at the eight invitation of the girls four by 400 meter relay. And you're right, that is Van Wert, is, excuse me, Kenton is in first, Spencerville in second, and Van Wert is in third now. All right, the runners are down, ready to accept the batons to see what's going to happen at this point. Kenton is first, Spencerville second, Van Wert third. What a great finish here. It's going to be fantastic. Kenton's going to get the baton first, followed closely by Spencerville. Van Wert in the third position, Mohawk in fourth. Bluffton has moved up to five. Man, that Kenton runner, she knows what she's got to she do does. right now. And she took off just with everything that she's got. She knew she was so close to that Spencerville runner once she got the baton. And the battle right now is for second place. Oh, look at the Van Wert runner. <laughs> the Van Wert runner coming up. She takes the second place position. She is hunting down the young lady from Kenton who has the lead right now. Oh, that Spencerville <laughs> runner is not ready to let that spot go what? in the second place. And they're both, they're both getting closer to that first place runner. We're going to have to stand up for this one as they come around the corner, down the home stretch they come, which is apropos to say on Kentucky Derby Day, here come the runners down the home stretch. All right, folks. Sorry, didn't mean to interrupt <laughs> You're good. you. You're good. You're good. But Spencerville has just moved straight into the Unbelievable. lead. Unbelievable. The Spencerville Bearcats, on the strength of their anchor runner, they're going to win the girls 4x400, four followed by Kenton and Van Wert. Back here at War Memorial Park for the final event of the day, the boys' 4x400 four meter relay, and a fantastic day of track and field as we wrap this one up, Jennifer. You used the word fantastic interestingly in my opinion because we have experienced so many weather changes Love it. throughout this meet and now we are here in the final race and the weather is beautiful it's gorgeous it's beautiful Absolutely. here's what we have running in lane one it's carrie lane two is mohawk lane three is spencerville lane four is bluffton lane five ada lane six faustoria lane seven arlington and lane eight kenton another Shout out to our title sponsor, Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken in Lima, Wapak, Duffs, and St. Mary's. Call Lee's for all your catering needs. Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken. Home style happens here. Thank you very much to those good folks at Lee's for being the title sponsor today. Taking a look at Travion Cousin from Faustoria. He is blazing around the track here. That is lane six. Faustoria comes in with the third fastest seed time. Bluffton is your top seed time in this heat. So here they come down the home stretch. Some really good times here for early May as everybody's gearing up for the postseason. And you're right, here comes Fostoria down the home stretch. And they are staggered a little bit, so we'll see what happens here on the second handoff. But Fostoria in the lead right now, followed by Bluffton. 
Looks like third place might be out there in lane seven with Arlington, though kind of close on those handoffs. Yeah, we'll see them lined up here. The third runners are going to be lined up right in front of us. The officials do a great job of getting them ready in the order that they should be in. According to our information here, that's Dylan Holmes for Fostoria. You know, haven't seen a lot of Fostoria. No, They're not, not right. in our area so much, so it's, it's neat to see some other teams and uh, – and the strengths that they have. Yeah, so the Fostoria Redmen and the Cary Blue Devils mm -hmm. are one, two right now in this event. Austin Niedercor is the second runner for Cary, according to what we have on our list. And I think he is eyeing that Fostoria runner. And he is a big young man. You can tell he spends some time on the football field in the weight room. And he's doing a great job for his Fostoria Redmen as they are continuing to lead after three runs. And Cary had a little trouble with the handoff. And uh, they fell back just a little bit, but they are in second place right now. Spencervale moved into third place, but might be dropping back. As you can see, we already have some lead changes on the curve. You may not be able to see that because you're watching another lead change as Kerry is currently challenging Fostoria. You are Fostoria. correct. Kerry's taking the lead, Jennifer. Good call on the back stretch. Kerry started in lane one. That means they weren't even close to the fastest right. seat time coming into this, but they that is not deterring them, you know? They obviously knew what they wanted to do when they came into this race. Absolutely, they've got the lead right now and it's Kerry and Fostoria, two schools in the same region in the state of Ohio and they are battling for the title here at the boys four by 400 meter relay. That's Bluffton that's moved into the third place spot and Spencerville might hand off in fourth or tied yeah, for four. Yeah, great call, Jennifer. You're right. They were. It was neck and neck for fourth place. Spencerville falls back to fifth now, and Carey leads. Fostoria coming on the outside, Jennifer. Mm. And they are trying to make a pass. The Carey runner holding off the Fostoria runner. What a battle we have for first place. Wow. It's almost like that Carey runner can feel that Fostoria <laughs> yeah, runner right. breathing on his neck, and he's just going to pick it up and move. Carey's Four runners are Brody Baker, Austin Niedercore, Bryce Puckett, and Braden Young. Carey continues to lead around the last curve here in the boys, four by 400. They are being pushed by Fostoria. What a race we have. It's Carey, it's Fostoria. Spencerville's in the three hole. What Arlington is fourth, but Bluffton trying to move up. And Bluffton is gonna take the fourth position. And Spencerville goes three, Bluffton four, Arlington five. Kenton six and Ada seventh, followed by Mohawk in the eighth position. What a run, Jennifer, in the boys' four by 400 relay. And that will wrap it up from War Memorial Park, the Ada Invitational. What a great day of track and field for Jennifer Beck, for Jacob O'Neill, our entire WSN crew. You've been watching track and field on the best coverage in West Central Ohio, WOSN.